dear all welcome to the playlist of sensors and transducers in this video i'll be discussing about variable inductance transducer in order to get the previous video link you can click on the i button let us understand why do i mean by variable inductance transducer actually the variable inductance transducer that is mainly working based on the principle of variable inductance okay uh, let us understand how does it operate a variable inductance transducers work based on change in the magnetic characteristics of an electrical circuit in response to the measure and this may be mechanical quantity such as displacement velocity acceleration etc actually there are two types of variable inductance transducer first one is self generating type and another one is the passive type you have to call, take care of this particular point which i have underlined that means change in the magnetic characteristics of electric circuit let us discuss how it can be classified moving on to the classification the variable inductance transducers can be broadly divided into two first one is self generating type second one is passive type you can subdivide generating type self generating type variable inductance transducers into three categories such as electromagnetic type electrodynamic type and eddy current type moving on to passive type the passive type variable inductance transducers can be broadly divided into three variable reluctance type mutual inductance type and finally linear variable differential transformer so these are the sub classification of passive type variable inductance transducers first of all i would like to discuss about why do we mean by self generating type variable inductance transducers so let us move on to the discussion first of all i would like to familiar what is gen self generating type variable inductance transducers you have to study what do you mean by self induction in fact voltage is generated because of the relative motion between the conductor and the magnetic field okay the type of self generating type transducers are as follows electromagnetic type electrodynamic type and eddy current type first of all i would like to speak about electromagnetic type self generating type transducer what do i mean by electromagnetic type variable inductance transducers basically it is having two components first one is permanent magnetic core and there is a coil also permanent magnetic core with a suitable amount of coil and the second thing is ferromagnetic material where the moving body will be connected to ferromagnetic material that means whenever moving body is connected to ferromagnetic material the magnetic field will be getting changed actually when the ferromagnetic material is in motion the voltage generated in the coil due to electromagnetic induction so it helps to identify the angular speed i'll take you the circuit diagram of electromagnetic type variable inductance transducers you can have a look on the electromagnetic type variable inductance transducers so please concentrate in this diagram so this is your ferromagnetic material where the moving body will be directly connected to ferromagnetic material number 1 number 2 we are having a permanent magnet which is having north pole and the south pole here we are placing the coil in this manner okay coil these are the turns of the particular coil so imagine that this is a 3d man actually the diagram is 2d just imagine in a three dimensional manner you will understand that first of all the ferromagnetic material that is getting fluctuate depends on the object so mechanical body has been connected to ferromagnetic material whenever ferromagnetic material is getting varied but what what is going to happen there is a change in magnetic field that change in magnetic field because of change in magnetic field the voltage induced at the coil that is getting varied that means the mechanical motion that is directly proportional to the output voltage generated the motion the mechanical motion you can say the mechanical motion that is directly proportional to the voltage generated at across the coil okay if the velocity is very much high the output voltage generated is high you have to remember the formula the inductance that will be depending on the number of turns then permeability then area of cross section of the coil then length of the coil you can have a relation also l is equal to n square mu a upon l this relation will be applicable for electro magnetic type variable inductance transducer okay so that you can able to measure displacement velocity etc so this is the way how electromagnetic type variable inductance transducer operate moving on to the second sub classification electrodynamic type variable inductance transducer let us understand the basics of electrodynamic type variable inductance transducer 
actually the coil moves within the field of magnet and also the turns of the coils are perpendicular to the intersecting magnetic lines of force okay both are perpendicular when the coil moves it induces the voltage which is proportional to the velocity of the coil so you know the working of uh, dc generator okay faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction same thing can be applied over there and you can able to calculate the total force generated in the magnetic field also you know magnetic flow meter magnetic flow meter works based on electrodynamic type variable inductance transducer so this principle behind magnetic flow meter is the same manner the same okay i will take you the diagram i will show you the diagram actually you can able to see the two diagrams related to electrodynamic type the first diagram that is mainly used for measurement of linear motion where the second diagram will be suitable for measuring the rotational motion especially circular motion moving on to the first diagram it is known as permanent magnet electrodynamic type variable inductance transducer here you can able to see the permanent magnet here north pole and south pole is available so there will be always electromagnetic lines of force that will be passing from north pole to south pole i think in pu classes you must have studied about magnetic mapping so it will always travel from north pole to south pole at the middle you are placing the coil so there is a coil which is having equal which is having certain amount of turns n and a suitable area and length you know that the moving body will be directly connected to this particular coil moving body okay it is under motion depends on the movement what is going to happen the coil that will be cutting to the electromagnetic lines of force both are perpendicular okay the coil as well as magnetic lines of force both are perpendicular because of that the emf will be induced across the coil the emf which is inducing across the coil that will be directly proportional to the movement that can be directly visible here so this can be used for the linear motion measurement measurement of linear motion if i talk about the rotational motion suppose circular circular motion okay so we have north pole and south pole obviously there will be always a magnetic line so force between north pole and south pole like like this okay you can write just flux phi phi means a group of magnetic lines of force it is expressed in terms of weber that magnetic lines of force that will be cutting to the coil since the coil is actually rotating in a circular fashion so this is your moving body moving body is connected to the coil then it is under the motion then the magnetic lines of force that is cutting to the coil this results the emf which is generating across the coil as the number of turns of the coil increases the induced emf also getting increased moreover the speed if the rotational speed is very much high in parallel emf generated also will be high so that motion is directly proportional to output voltage this is very clear okay so that is regarding electrodynamic type rotational type uh, variable inductance transducer okay now let me discuss about the third type eddy current type variable inductance transducer you know what is eddy current so we can explain eddy current with the help of faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction so because of faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction the induced emf that will be generating on the conductor afterwards there will be a circulating current that will be generating in the conductor that circulating current is known as eddy current so eddy current will be depending on the changes in magnetic field you know the diagram of eddy current type variable inductance transducer you can have an observation of rotating shaft this is your rotating shaft see there is a it performs circular motion okay so one of the major application i wanted to tell you it is applicable in the automobile for speedometer okay so there is a rotating shaft here you can able to see a permanent magnet north and south pole as the shaft is rotating Uh, the permanent magnet is also going to rotate that is very clear because it is coupled and you can able to see that steel cup as well as aluminum cup okay these are the two strip which are placed over the okay now the one end of aluminum cup that is connected to the dial through a spring so this spring will provide the controlling torque tc controlling torque so that is directly connected to dial and pointer where you will be getting the reading for example speedometer how you are getting the speed based on the eddy current type variable inductance transducer it will convert the mechanical motion into electrical quantity okay now let me explain how does it operate as the rotating shaft operates whenever rotating shaft moves the permanent magnet is also getting operated okay because of that 
the eddy current that will be generating the rotating shaft. As the eddy current will be producing the shaft, what will happen? It creates the damping torque. It will be definitely it will be creating the damping torque. Whenever controlling torque is equal to damping torque, you will be getting the reading. Okay. So eddy current actually will be generating in the steel cup. Okay, definitely that will induce the torque at rotating shaft. So as the motion increases, obviously you will be getting the reading also. Okay, uh, the reading will be more as the motion, as the speed or displacement. We can talk about the speed as the displacement, uh, as the speed increases, the reading also become high. So how you are measuring that your car is running uh, the 120 kmph or 80 kmph? So same principle. Okay, so here in that automobile. You can able to use the variable inductance type eddy current type transducer. So that is the one of the practical application. Same thing I have written on the PPT also. You can go through that. Shaft rotates a permanent magnet. This induces eddy current on the disc. That is very true. The eddy current produces the torque, which rotates the couple against the uh, torque of the spring. That means it, uh, the torque which is generating the spring and the torque which is produced by the cup that both are opposite. A pointer attached to the cup that indicates the rotational speed of the particular shaft. Okay, how the shaft is rotating that will be directly indicated. So that calibration can be done if you want to go for higher range. And also you can able to measure the eddy current type tachometer can measure the speed up to 12,000 RPM. That is also a great thing. Application as I told you that it can be used in automobile speedometer. So these are the various application of eddy current type variable inductance transducer. Okay, diagram also I have explained. I will explain the passive type, second category of variable inductance transducer. Let us understand what do you mean by passive type variable inductance transducer. Regarding passive type, it can be divided into three variable reluctance transducer, mutual inductance transducer, and finally LVDT. First and the foremost, I would like to discuss about variable reluctance transducer. You know what is reluctance? So reluctance is actually opposition of electromagnetic lines of force in the magnetic circuit. So reluctance is actually we are preventing by using a material or any other object. We are preventing the magnetic lines of force. Reluctance can be written as L divided by mu into A, where L is the length of the material and A is the area of cross section of the material and mu is known as permeability of the material. So reluctance is directly proportional to length and reluctance is inversely proportional to area of cross section. Like the resistance, in case of electric circuit, you are telling that R is equal to uh, rho L divided by A. Same manner, we can write it as an analogous quantity. Both are analogous. Resistance in electrical quantity, reluctance in a uh, magnetic circuit. Okay, resistance is belong to electrical circuit, where reluctance is belong to magnetic circuit. That differences we must have learned in basic electrical engineering. Coming to the topic, I am I'm going to explain about variable reluctance transducer. It obeys the reluctance of the magnetic circuit. So changes in inductance is proportional to changes in the mechanical input. So the quantity such as force, pressure, displacement, acceleration can be measured by using variable reluctance transducer. Let me clarify with the help of a simple diagram. As you can see, so this is a variable reluctance transducer. Okay, it is very clear. You can have a look on the particular uh, circuit diagram. So we have a material, R major. It, it may be a conductor, R major. So mechanical object that is connected to this particular moving body, armature, it may be a ferromagnetic material. You know that uh, this is a permanent magnet, permanent magnet. I'll be calling P. P stands for permanent magnet. Okay. Or else you can call, you can use the electromagnet also, no issues. So let me take you, this is an electromagnet, not permanent magnet. I'll be assuming that because coil is there, no? So I have to say that this is an electromagnet. So if there is an electromagnet, you can see the electromagnet. Let me call E. E stands for electromagnet. Clear? Now, there is a coil, suitable winding has been provided and you have an excitor, excitor also. We are going to provide a supply, excitor. This is for the meter. Okay, this is for the meter. According to that, you can able to provide the excitation. Clear? Whenever I am going to provide the excitation, what is going to happen? The electromagnet become permanent magnet. Electromagnet is become permanent magnet. So there is always an air gap L. Okay, there is an air gap length. This is air gap length. Okay. Now, Depends on the movement. An object is under motion. Mechanical body is connected to armature, a conductor. Whenever conductor is actually uh, moving, the air gap will be changes. Air gap is getting changed. So as you know that reluctance is directly proportional to length. 
okay if the length is very length of length, length between these two surfaces are very less that means reluctance is also getting less clear reluctance is reduced with respect to changes in reluctance what is going to happen the uh, the output is getting varied okay so you are going to measure the movement with a, uh, in terms of reluctance that is exactly happening over there so uh, this meter gives the suitable indication so with respect to reluctance whenever uh, the movement will be changing the reluctance also getting varied this is the way how variable inductance tends to sir operate based on the reluctance principle based on the reluctance okay with respect to motion reluctance also getting varied okay so that reluctance that prevents electromagnetic lines of force so this uh, this is actually based on ed current type of variable reluctance tends to sir you can able to observe Uh, we have an electromagnet iron core you can able to see this is an iron core you are going to uh, provide a suitable winding okay then uh, this is a conductor you can say iron material and you are connecting the mechanical object over the suppose displacement have to be measured you have to measure the displacement so this is an air gap suppose if the uh, target iron is very much closer to the magnet electromagnet okay this magnet what will happen the air gap length is reduced air gap length is reduced if the air gap is length is reduced reluctance also getting reduced so the output voltage is getting increased i hope it is very clear so this is the way how the variable reluctance tends to sir getting operated based on the principle of reluctance you have to take care the parameter of reluctance that's the main criteria here now i would like to discuss about the second criteria mutual inductance type transducer you know it comprises of two coil first one is called energizing coil i'll take you this is actually energizing coil there is an exciter x stand for energizing coil okay now uh, there is a pickup coil that is called y y is the pickup coil you can call it as a secondary coil this is primary coil y is the secondary coil energizing coil and a pickup coil you can explain in that manner suppose you are using an armature conductor your mechanical body is connected to uh, the armature it's a conductor from magnetic material as the armature move towards the particular uh, arrangement what is going to happen air gap is getting varied air gap is reduced as the air gap reduces the reluctance also getting reduced that you know because reluctance is directly proportional to length you have to recall once again very important reluctance is directly proportional to length okay as the length reduces reluctance also reduces suppose if the length is increased in parallel reluctance also getting increased so based on the value of reluctance so what will happen so based on the value of reluctance if the reluctance is very much high your output is getting reduced okay that means your armature suppose your armature come closer suppose your armature is coming very much closer it blocks the magnetic flux that means because of this output voltage comes down okay you can recall the expression m is equal to k into square root of l1 l2 where k is known as uh, coefficient of coupling coefficient of coupling for ideal case we will treat entire primary flux will be uh, cutting at the secondary side linking with the secondary side ideal case it will be one but that never happens because of practical constraints that never happens okay this you have to record so that you can able to measure uh, the mutual inductance tends to sir you can able to measure displacement using uh, the mutual inductance tends to sir with respect to the reluctance okay so here you are going to provide the excitation at the primary side the flux will be generated to the secondary side by using the motion you can able to reduce the value of flux so if the flux is very much less that means output voltage is getting reduced suppose if the armature part is very much closer to the electromagnet obviously flux will be reduced if the flux is reduced means output will be less okay so that you can able to measure the movement with the direct that will be directly proportional to output voltage i hope you understood so this is regarding mutual inductance stand to sir so i have referred the following textbooks okay i have gathered the information from the following textbooks and also from some website okay in the coming session i will be discussing about lvdt one of the very very important topic linear variable differential trans transformer you can call transducer also lvdt okay linear variable differential transformer or transducer okay so why i kept separately because that is very much important for automation if you are going for a course for plc and scada that will be really useful that's why i have kept the session separately so we will discuss the concept of lvdt in the upcoming session finally thank you very much for watching this video if you are having any queries please do put them in the comment box